Okay, welcome to you both and thank you for having proposed this talk today. I will uh, just be quiet and leave you uh, the floor so you can start to share your screen and I will just mute myself and disappear while you're speaking. So hello everyone. Uh, our topic today is the adoption of Capella in Comac. It will be presented by Xin Yi Tang from Comac and uh, Renfei Xu from PGM. There are five parts in our talk. The first one is the background of our work. And the second one is the overview of our architecture design solution in Comac. And the third one is a detailed introduction of one part of our solution, the interface collaborative design. And the fourth part is a brief introduction of the other part of our, our solution, uh, includes the collaborative design of common facilities and the model-based safety anal analysis. And the last one is the feedback from field. So let's take a look at the first part, the background. And uh, I would like to introduce uh, Xin Yi to present this slide. Um, Comac is implementing large passenger aircraft programs in China. It's engaged in the research, manufacture, and flight tests of civil aircraft and related products. It also participates in marketing, servicing, leasing, and operations of civil aircraft. With the vision to deliver safer, cost-effective, comfortable, and environment-friendly commercial aircraft, COMAC is mandated with the overall planning of trunk liner and regional jet programs and the industrialization of commercial aircraft in China. Okay, thanks. And COMAC is adopting Capella since 2018, especially in avionics domain. And we PGM cooperates with COMAC for the implementation of Capella since 2020. Now we have developed an entire architectural design solution for avionics systems based on Capella, including interface design, common facilities design, and safety analysis. What we will introduce today is a part of this solution focused on interface collaborative design. And now I would like to make a brief intro introduction of PGM. PGM is short for Pugo Mountain, which is a mountain full of treasure, recorded in Shanghai Jing, an ancient book in China. So uh, it's, it has a good meaning for, for the name. And we are, we are one of the leading providers of MBSC solution and the consulting service in China. We can provide, in, we can provide the consult, consulting service uh, about MBSE, requirement engineering, and the software development, development process consulting. And also we can provide IT implementation based on Capella, Team Center, and Polarium. And, and including the IT support. And, and also we can do co-design work together with our customers about complex systems. And here um, are the two. Yeah, yeah you, you can go first. Um, I work in the avionics integration department here at Comac. Our team are making collective efforts in collaborative architecture design modeling in the field of avionics. Um, work has been done from requirements, software specifications to detailed design work. Okay, and uh, I am Renfei Xu from PGM. And, uh, and I have uh, participated in a lot of projects of MBSC in areas like engine control, avionics, mechatronics, radar, and so on. And now I am dedicated in the promotion of Capella in China. Now let's 
see the the solution in Comac. And we have uh, faced by three main challenges in Comac uh, in tradition traditional design methods. Um, the first one, the first challenge is that uh, you know we have many member systems in avionics domain, and each of them work as an isolated island in tradi in traditional ways, and the collaboration between different team is difficult, not so effective. So for the overall design team from avionics integration department, they will allocate some high level functions to different member systems and define some high level interface interfaces between uh, these member systems. And, and then the member systems will carry on to refine the function, refine the interface to define some fine grained interface interfaces based on the allocation of the overall design team. So there will be a lot of collaborative work um, between different member systems, between member systems and uh, the overall design team. And it is not so efficient and effective in traditional ways based on the document and the face-to-face -face meeting. So that's the first main challenge. The second main challenge uh, is that the different member systems, they will uh, always share some common facilities, for example, a common switch network. And the design of these common facilities also need a lot of collaboration work. So the design team of the common facilities, they need to collect information and the requirements from all the member systems design team. And uh, after the collection of requirements, they need to um, do the design job to define the common facilities, to allocate the, the functions, the functions from different member system member systems to the to the common facilities. And then they need to push back the design result to these member systems to tell them um, which members, um, which which command facility is used in that member system? So it also contains a lot of collaboration, and it is not so efficient and effective in traditional document ways. And uh, that's the second main challenge faced by Comac. And the third one is that there exists a huge gap between architecture design team and the safety analysis team. And, you know, the safety analysis work has to uh, carried out based on the architectural design work. And uh, they are uh, usually done by different teams. So the safety analyzer, they need to read and try to understand the, the design of the architecture by reading the document. And, and then they, they have to make a huge uh, human effort to build the safety model, to um, especially to build up the fault tree and the, the um, correctness um, and the consistency between the safety model and the architecture model. It's not guaranteed. It's it's not so. Um, it, it's not guaranteed by the traditional document based ways. So that's the third challenge. And in order to overcome all these challenges, we are adopting MBSC method. We are using Acadia and Capella and make some extensions based on Capella um, to um, build up a an, an whole architecture design solution to uh, overcome this. So uh, here is the overview of our architecture design solution. Uh, we have defined three types of uh, Capella models. And the first one is the overall requirements model, uh, which will be um, built by the um, overall design team, uh, which belongs to the avionics integration department. And they will um, model the an operational analysis model 
the safety analysis, the, the system analysis model, and the, the logical architecture model. And in the logical architecture model, um, they will allocate the high level functions to different member systems and define the high level interfaces between all these member systems. Then they will make a transition from the overall requirements model to the member system model, from the logical architecture to the system an analysis model. And then it will be um, hand over to the um, design team of the member systems. They will refine the si system analysis model and uh, uh, move on to build the architecture, the logical architecture model. And after all the um, all the models are done by um, all the member systems, this logical architecture model will be integrated to the third type of capital model, the overall integration model, um, to get the whole picture of the uh, logical architecture of the um, of the the whole avionics systems and all the interface collaborative design will be um, carried out based on all these three types of models and then the design team of the member system they will move on to the physical architecture design and after the the model building uh, they will also be integrated into the overall integration model and to get the the total physical architecture of the uh, avionics system. And the collaborative de design of the common facilities will be carried out based on these two physical architecture model. And also the model-based safety analysis can be um, based on, can be carried out based on the architecture model of the member system model and the overall overall integration model. So the transition and the integration um, between these models, um, they are extended based on the system to subsystem transition add-on, which is an open source open source um, add-on um, for Capella. Okay, now I would like to invite my co-speaker, Xin Yi Tang, to make a detailed introduction of the interface collaborative design. Thank you, uh, Rafei. Um, the avionics um, design involves about like 10 member systems. Our team can be viewed as two groups. One is in charge of the overall modeling and integration, while the other is in charge of the system design work, as Renfei has introduced. Um, at the very beginning, we need to establish the designer's understanding of the entire civil aviation operating system. We need to define the aircraft level requirements and interfaces. And with this uh, system to subsystem transition, we could assign the aircraft level functions to our member systems and define the relationships between member systems top level interfaces. Um, what we do is we uh, look into the overall aircraft model and we choose a right click on this um, logical component representing the member system we would like to distribute to. Um, after uh, we do this ADA distribution, the system, uh, these logical components of the aircraft model will be transitioned as system elements in this member systems project. The related components like the pilot here, the ADA number two and number three here will be also transitioned. The functions, functional exchanges, functional change related will all be transitioned to ADA number one's project model. We can see in this figure that um, the distributed components will be created as subsystem elements the components related will become actors after distribution. And the allocation relationship between functions and components, as well as the functional chains will be distributed to the member systems project. Um, 
when we actually start to work on the system analysis work, uh, member systems like go through a first round architect design, then we find that they should have had more, um, oh, the um, interfaces assigned uh, may not be detailed enough for uh, to illustrate the um, detailed real-time collaborative design results. Um, for example, airspeed is a widely used parameter in our aircraft. The navigation system obtains the parameter from its sensors. The display system may need a calculated airspeed to indicate the pilot, while flight control system may need a vaulted airspeed to, uh, for their own devices. Um, the interface assigned may not be detailed enough to illustrate this uh, situation. So we developed this uh, functional exchange refinement in our platform. Um, what we do is the system designers would click on the internal or external interfaces in their own ADA systems model, where they choose to do this refined functional exchange, and then a pop-up dialog um, will pop up. In this pop-up dialog, the designers can choose to add, modify, or delete um, functional exchanges. These exchanges are in a lower level and can be traced back to the original ones. Um, for internal and external interfaces, um, the results are always synchronized. So it doesn't matter which end, like for the external interfaces, it doesn't matter which end this refinement work is done in, the both systems will get the detailed refinement results all the time because it's done on this platform. Um, this refinement function is accessible in both system analysis level and also logical architect level. Um, if the designers would like to restore to the original interface, they could just delete all this uh, refined interfaces in the dialog. Also, we can click on the category uh, functional exchange here and look for reference elements in the semantic browser. We can see how they are traced. We can also choose to uh, show the category functional exchange or the detailed functional exchanges in the layout and switch as we want. When the member systems are really starting to do their design work, they may find that there are um, they should have had more functions and functional exchanges assigned to them. So it's um, the overall model and integration team should take this into account and make modifications on the top level. Um, they need to add the required elements and then do a redistribution to get this modifications assigned to the member systems related. And as for the functional exchanges for the lacking ones, we actually allow member systems to create interfaces in their own projects. What they do is to create a new functional exchange and then right click to do sync to related systems so that the interface will be synchronized to the other system as well as the overall model. After all our member systems finish their system analysis and logical architect, they define the logical components and also do like a redundant design. It's the integration uh, team's job to get this complete, complete set of logical architect. What we do is um, create an integration model on this remote model library um, and then do this integrate ADA model selection here. The synchronized interfaces will be identified as one interface during this integration. After integrated, the refined uh, elements can also be traced back to the original ones. Um, we actually merge one member system at a time. Still, we look into this figure as an example. Um, this, um, this member system has a subcomponent number one and two. It has a new actor, which is not distributed by the overall system. It also has a new logical function here that is not allocated to a, uh, to a logical component in. These two 
elements will not be integrated after merging, but the others are related, including the functions, logical components, functional exchanges, and functional changes will be all merged into our integration model. So in general, our integration will include the component, the system elements and member systems. We will include the sub-logical component hierarchy, the function hierarchy, and also the functional exchanges, functional chains, component changes, all be merged. The actors that are not distributed by aircraft model will not be integrated. Um, as member systems would update their modeling, we will do like a incremental integration. In this figure, we will see that functional exchange number seven is added, a new function, a uh, new function allocated to subcomponent number three, and also the function chain is modified. So what we we will all include these changes in our incremental integration. The incremental in integration will include added and modified sublogical components, um, functions, and also function exchanges, functional changes, functional changes. If we add or modify the source and target function of a functional exchange, these will all be synchronized to our integration model. We have developed some validation rules for our uh, integration job. Uh, figure on the left, we can see um, on the above figure, the subsystem number one has component uh, exchange to include the both functional exchanges. But below, the on the project of system number two, the component exchange one only include one functional exchange. Our validation number or rule number one will check if a functional exchange is allocated to the same component exchange in both member systems. So in this case, this discrepancy will be found out and the error log will, will print a message to indicate our designers. Our validation rule number two is to check if a functional exchange's source and target function is a lift one. So figure on the right shows the case that is incorrect the functional exchange has a source uh, function that has a sub function here. So these will be found out too, and the error log will print a message to indicate our designers. Cindy, Renfei, sorry for the interruption. Just to let you know that we have 10 more minutes before we have to start the questions and answers. Sure. Okay. Um, well, what our designers would do is they click on this check the integrity of model option here. Um, this integrity of model will be auto automatically checked and the corresponding error messages will be printed out. Next. Two items will be checked if we do this check the integrity of model to see if the, uh, the source and target function has sub functions and also if two functions or two functional exchanges share the same name. These discrepancies can be located in the project explorer if we go to the view in explorer option here. Um, these discrepancies and incorrectness should be corrected before our final integration job gets to be done. So we have introduced how we tackle this collaborative interface design. Now we will briefly introduce how we deal with the common facilities design and how we build a bridge from Capella models to model-based system analysis tools. Um, we deal with common facilities design in uh, physical architect level. Um, switch network is actually on the top of our priority list. Member systems may have applications hosted in switch network uh, devices. They can function in data computation and data transportation. We need our designers to right-click on this functional exchange and do the set bus type uh, job here. We need to click on the box or not to indicate that it's, it will be carried out and implemented by switch network or not. Internal interfaces will require a member system designer to finish uh, the design defining job 
for their both ends, and external interfaces will require both member systems to finish their defining tasks at their end. Once they're done with all the defining jobs, it will be the system. Uh, it will be the switch network system to collect the information and do their physical architect design job. Um, we also allow this uh, make this physical link and physical path out of creation possible. The integration team will create all this links and path so that we can distribute the uh, common facilities design results to our member systems and that result will be accessible for or our member designers. And concerning model-based safety analysis, which is the last part of our uh, introduction today, we built um, the transition from Capella models to model-based system analysis tools. And we developed them to uh, automatically create failure propagation modeling, um, which will further support failure condition modeling, plot tree analysis, failure mode and effect analysis. In this process, um, safety analysis could work on the single point of failure, combination failure, and so on. And last, we actually um, developed a failure mode library function here. So when related to Capella model elements, a default failure mode will be automatically added into our failure mode library. Comac has adopted this solution for two, over two years and we will continuously delve into the model-based system engineering in the domain of avionics and aviation. Our work has received much credit from our leaders in our department, as well as from the chief designer of our aircraft type. So that'll be all for our presentation today. Thank you for your time and for listening. Well, thank you very much, Cindy and Ben Fei. That was a, a very interesting presentation. And we have a few questions in the Q&A. Uh, session. So I, I will just uh, move to these questions immediately. Uh, okay. Okay, so here is the first question. It looks like people are impressed by the amount of work it, it seems to be to, uh, to model an aircraft, which should not really come as a surprise, I guess. So Let's see, it seems like it's a huge amount of work to maintain all these transitions and consistency between all models. At which pace are you synchronizing the models? How do you manage the incremental aspects of these synchronizations? Do the models all evolve on their own? Uh, okay, I maybe I will um, answer this question. Um, Yes, this is a huge amount of work. So we have done a lot of extension. Can you based on... Fei, did you did you hear me? Yes, yes. Yeah. You hear us? Yeah, can can you hear me? H Hello? Can you hear me? I can hear you. <laughs> okay, then I will continue. So uh, your uh, voice is breaking. Okay. Uh, okay. So, um, this yes, is. Please go ahead, Renfei. Yeah, this is it. Yes, this is a huge amount of work. So, we have done a lot of extension based on the system to system hear you transition. Now. Please go, go ahead. Okay. Um, and uh, mm, we have. Mm, spend a, a lot of time to fix the different bugs um, based on the extension. And uh, now it's um, it's uh, stable and uh, and uh, we can handle ah, all this the This is unlucky, it looks like your voice is really breaking, Renfei. Well, uh, so what about the, the, the voice of Xinyi, maybe? Maybe you can answer this. <laughs> okay. Um, 
So we do not allow this synchronization and updating of the models all the time. Um, in our design work, we actually have like a set, uh, a marked date of one, like a one configuration. So it's not allowed. So this function is not open to all the member systems all the time when they need to update their um, modeling and do this synchronizing thing, they need to um, uh, keep a track, keep a lock date, a uh, lock thing like that. And when, for the integration job, it's also, uh, we just keep a track of um, when we do this integration and um, when we have some incremental integration, we will be, we will keep a note that what kind of incremental changes are made. Um, I don't think we have this evolving on their own models yet, if I understand you correctly. All these models are um, have to be updated and work has must be done by manual designers. Yeah. Yeah, every model. Okay, thank the, you for this, your answers. Let's move to the next yeah. question. Okay. Here it is. How are you ensuring consistency uh, regarding which parent and leaf function at the same Arcadia level are subject to safety and functional decomposition processes mandated via some standard processes, for example? I'm not sure if I. I I have understand it, this question. So, mm, you know, in in Capella, all all functions, it it has its parent function and its leaf function. So, I don't know why it's not, it, why it's a question to to ensuring the consistency. Um, I think he wants to um, ask us how we ensure this thing uh, that is subject to the processes mandated via ARP 4754 processes. So this, um, mm, we're actually still working on how we could ensure this process. Um, we really are trying to explore, um, we're on this process. Uh, a clarification apparently about, it looks like the overall integration model is built from, uh, with the support of a custom automation tool. So maybe you can elaborate a bit on what you have added to Capella. Yeah, this is done by the extension of the system to subsystem transition add-on. And th this open source the add-on only do the work from the from the mm, overall requirement model to the member systems model, and we have ex extended the the fe feature of the add-on to to make it make it possible to integrate from the member system to the integration system uh, the, the 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 member system to the integration mo model. So. That's a, a lot of extension work. We have this one. Can you please explain the utility need brought by your functional exchange refinement module? Mm, I, 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 will, I will try to answer this question first. And uh, mm, you know, in tra traditional ways, the the member systems and the um, overall, overall design teams they only um, um, interact by document or face-to-face -face meeting or even just a call, a phone call. So um, when a member system want to um, refine an interface or add an interface, um, sometimes he, he may just uh, call the designer of another system and tell, tell him that, uh, yeah, I have add another interface um, between you and me and maybe after some 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 duration after some times some days 
the other guy for, forget this thing and they and both of them um, forget to tell the 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 overall design team so that will make the um, design information inconsistency so um that's the traditional ways and and in in our solution the all the um, interface uh, information um, the high level interface and the, the refined the inf in, the refined interface uh, all are kept on the server and the the um, the, the the information on one side is um, has to be um, consistent with the information on the other side the other side of the member system and they they are all the that they are all consistent with the overall requirement model. So these are guaranteed by the system, by the IT system. Yeah, so that, that, that's my answer. How did you perform integration of system models into your integration model diff merge? Did you face the, any issues during these integration steps, conflicts? Uh, uh, I, I think I, I will answer this question again. It's it's more about the um, the, the platform. Yes, the the extension about the integration is uh, developed based on the diff merge the diff merge feature of Capella, and uh, there will be um, a lot of potential con conflicts. So um, the Key point is to um, make a, um, a modeling rule, um, um, ac accurate um, modeling rule for the these design teams to to, to obey, and uh, um, more important uh, um, a more important point is before the integration we will do some auto validation of the model which has been mentioned in in our presentation so we will. And validate these model to find out the conf conflicts and if if it's not mature enough to be integrated uh, we will um, pump up some warning messages for the for the designers to um, to correct the model or to, to modify the model and we, we will only integrate when when there is no um, no important conflicts so if you have something to, um, yeah, if you have some additional opinion, you, you can you can just say it. This um, um, this process is more like a transition job, not not merging them together. Um, I don't think there is existing safety analysis uh, added ups on uh, add-ons in Capella yet, but um, there should be a bridge um, available. And the next question. How do you ensure consistency between overall requirement model and overall integration model? All the elements will be labeled with a specific ID thing, and that will be the only identification for uh, for all modeling job. So that's how we make sure they're the traced and they are consistent. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much once again, Renfei and Sinyi. Can you please stop sharing?